Hello, Matt Pullen here, and this is the final, for now at least, installment of Stonewall Legacy, where we've been looking at interesting black responses to the Stonewall attack for white. And today, we're going to look at lines where black develops his bishop out to g4. He can either do this right away, or he can uh, play c6 and wait for white to commit a knight to d2 and then put the bishop on g4. We're going to look at this line first because this is the line that a lot of GMs play against the stone wall. And if f3 immediately, then bishop h5, followed by bishop g6, and black has a pretty comfortable game. If white uh, tries to develop the knight to f4, then black will just trade bishops as opposed to letting white trade his knight for a bishop. And if uh, if white commits to e4 here, then black can just play e6, and it's pretty solid. It's uh, going to be like a French, except the uh, black problem bishop is outside of the pawn chain. So, so the move that is... Uh, most recommended for white is knight e2 here. And this move, if uh, black now plays knight b to d7, I'm going to follow this game uh, Norowitz Strapunsky from 2003. At least I'm going to follow the first part of it. And now white kicks the bishop with f3 and bishop h5, and now white brings the knight into f4. And white wants to exchange the uh, knight for the bishop. So, so now black is threatening to play e5, but it's white's turn and he plays f4 to stop it. And now e6 was played in the game, c3, bishop d6, castles, queen e7, queen e2, and now in the in the game uh, Strapunsky played g5. And after white developed the knight to f3, g4, which is incredibly risky, it's uh, very hard for black to defend this pawn on g4 after white brings the knight into e5. But let me look at a more normal continuation here. Let's say black castles queenside, which is logical. He has the uh, open h file to try to attack the white king side. But white controls a lot of space, so even though black has this great open file, it's not as easy as it would seem to attack white's king. So now, knight to f3, and often in this variation, black brings a knight to uh, e4, and white captures with the bishop, and then plays knight to g5. This pawn on e4 is hard for black to defend, and if he brings the pawn to f5 to defend it, well, this knight on g5 can never be attacked by a pawn. So, uh, so white would have uh, the posted piece. It's in a very good position. And if knight to f6, a little less committal, then uh, white can just attack it again. And there's nothing that can support this. So, so yeah, this, uh, this is a feature of positions where black doesn't have an h-pawn, where he's captured back on g6 that white can capture and then bring the knight to g5. So, let's go back a few moves. Now, instead of bishop g6 here, black can play e5. And uh, this, actually, if white knows what he's doing, is not a big problem. White should capture, and now white should castle because the threat was queen to h4 check. So white castles, and now a mistake would be a bishop to d6, because then f4 with the discovered attack on the knight on h5. So instead, black should just bring that knight right back. And now white can play c4, and he has a slight advantage in this position. He has the two bishops and just as much control over the center as black does. So that is e5, 
And we already looked at what happens after white pushes to f3. Black brings the bishop back and followed by bishop g6. Now if knight e2 and black brings the bishop back to h5 immediately without being kicked, I'm not sure uh, what to do for white in this position. It's uh, kind of unexplored. I think that makes sense for white to play f4 in this position. Because uh, if the bishop comes back, then black, white has f5. So black might have to play something like e6 here. And now I think maybe even a move like uh, knight f3, which allows black to double the white pawns. It's uh, kind of interesting. Again, I'm, I'm not sure that this is correct. Maybe after e6, white should castle and then play knight to f3. And if the bishop comes to a g6, just allow black to capture and then take back with the pawn. So, so now let's look at another line with bishop to g4. Let's look at the immediate bishop g4 instead of c6. Well, this uh, white has the benefit of not committing a knight to d2 here. So f3, which is the best move, and now bishop to h5. And now white can play c4 and bring his knight to c3. And this, after a black plays c6, knight c3, e6... Knight h3, this is a game of uh, Pillsbury versus Jano Grodsky from uh, 1893. And in this position, black played knight to d7 and allowed white to play knight to f4. And this capture, h takes f4, leads to a position that's very much like the game we just saw, except now uh, white has a pawn on c4 and a knight on c3 as opposed to a knight on d2 and a uh, pawn on c3. Now he controls some more space on the uh, queen side with this uh, pawn and knight, but the drawback is that there's no good way for white to get a knight to e5, so white will need to make do without that. After uh, bishop to b4, White played queen to f3, and white's position looks very reasonable here. So, what I, uh, again, I looked at another move that was not played in this game. Bishop to g6 immediately, ensuring that black can trade off the bishop for the white bishop. But I think that white can just ignore this and play castles. Because now, if black goes after the bishop, then... Black has spent a lot of moves with his bishop. He's moved the bishop uh, once to g4, twice to uh, h5, three times to g6, and four times to capture on d3. Whereas white is moving a new piece every turn. So already white is almost fully developed, and he's about to gain some space in the center by playing e4. I, but uh, the white bishop isn't running away. I mean, there's, uh, there's really no reason why black has to take right away. He can continuous development, say, uh, playing bishop to e7. And this leads to an interesting game, where I, uh, I think black hasn't quite equalized yet, but he's pretty close. So, so let's look at, uh, let's look at one more, one more line, where black plays the bishop to uh, g4. Let's look at a line where where black waits until white has played f4 and knight f3 to bring the bishop to g4. And now white can play h3 if he wants to force this trade. It's not a bad trade for white. Or he can castle. And then after black plays a move like uh, knight d7, White can play queen e1. Queen e1 unpins the knight, so the knight is uh, threatening to jump into e5. And if the bishop captures, then white can play rook takes and use the tempo to get his rook over to h3 and possibly build an attack on the king side. So 
Against lines where, uh, where black plays bishop to g4 pinning, I suggest that white castle and play queen e1 to get out of the pin, followed by knight e5. Well, this has been, uh, it's been real fun making this series on the Stonewall, and I think I'm going to take a break from making chess videos now, but I will see you after not too long.